Hi guys. It is a chilly autumn night here in the fall of 2021 and the collapse of global industrial civilization. There could be some frost on the pumpkin for the first time in the fall of 2021. It is now Wednesday, October 20. 2021, I believe. So I don't think I did my oilprice.com uh, roundup last week. So we're going to fix that. We're going to head over to oilprice.com and see what all of those energy investors have to say about the state of the planet. And, and guys, I understand that obviously oilprice.com is going to have a certain slant to it, but the problem is, depending on your definition of problem, is there right that this is a reality check? To see, uh, I find oilprice.com to be the most realistic uh, website about the correct state of the planet, where we're going. I mean, not so much the state of the planet, but exposing all, all of these these bright green lies. And, uh, and their issue this week, it looks like they're really settling on uh, about the global oil shortage. Uh, and... and is like the overriding. So I'm going to read several of these and we're going to touch base uh, with several articles and for you peak oilers out there might want to listen in and I could pretty much make this first article the entire video. A global oil shortage is inevitable and uh, so the takeaway, they always give you the takeaway before the article. So the takeaway while oil and gas companies come under pressure to reduce production, the world's thirst for new supply, meaning new supplies of fossil fuels, is only growing without a significant uptick, uptick in investment demand for oil and gas and coal will surpass supply demand will surpass, surpass supply in the not-so-distant future, this disconnect between the political desire for less fossil fuels and the global hunger for more fossil fuels could drive the price of oil up to $100 a barrel and imagine what that means for prices at the pump. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Chronic underinvestment in new oil supply since the 2015 crisis, whatever that was, and the pressure on oil and gas companies to curb emissions and even keep it in the ground will likely lead to peak global oil production, peak global oil production earlier than previously expected, analysts say. This would be a welcome development for green energy advocates, net zero agendas, and the planet. Yes, this would be a welcome development for the planet if it were not for one simple fact. Oil demand is rebounding from the pandemic-driven slump and will set a new average annual record as soon as next year. The energy transition and the various government plans for net zero emissions have prompted analysts to forecast that peak oil demand would occur earlier than expected just a few years ago. However, as current investment trends in oil and gas stand, global oil supply could peak sooner than global oil demand, opening a supply gap that would lead to increased volatility on the oil market with spikes in prices 
and potentially structurally higher oil prices by the middle of this decade and beyond. So breaking this down further, this says Morgan Stanley, uh, according to this is a new Morgan Stanley report, quote, on current trends, global oil supply is likely to peak even earlier than demand. The planet puts boundaries on the amount of carbon that can safely be emitted. Therefore, oil consumption needs to peak. Uh, close quote. Back to oilprice.com, the problem with the world. The problem with the world is that oil consumption, wishful thinking, investor pressure and all, is not peaking. Nor will oil consumption peak until the end of this decade at the earliest, according to most estimates. OPEC expects global oil demand to continue to grow into the mid-2030s to 108 million barrels per day, after which it is set to plateau until 2045, as per the cartel's latest annual outlook. Uh, some analysts expect peak demand at some point in the late 2020s. Uh, investment in new supply, however, is severely lagging global oil demand growth. Demand is growing again after the 2020 COVID crisis, and contrary to some expectations from early 2020, that the world's oil consumption would never return to pre-pandemic levels, demand is currently just a few months away from hitting and exceeding those levels, those so 2019 levels. Uh, supply, on the other hand, looks constrained. I, I, I love this, guys. New investment last year slumped, slumped to a 15-year low. Last year, uh, global investment sank to a 15-year low, sank to a 15-year low of $350 billion. $350 billion uh, last year, which was a 15-year low. Yes, I, I love that. When you spend $350 billion, it is called a slump. Uh, only, only at oilprice.com. Uh, U.S. shale, for its part, is not rushing this time to, quote, drill themselves into oblivion. Yes, uh... Considering that oil demand will still grow, under investment in new supply would be a major problem in the medium and long term. Uh, despite the energy transition, demand will not just vanish, and new supply will be needed for years to come to replace declining production and reserves. Uh, the oil industry will need massive investments over the next 25 years in order to meet the demand according to uh, OPEC. Uh, Patrick Poyon, chief executive of France's Total Energies, said at the Energy Intelligence Forum this month that oil prices would, quote, rocket to the roof by 2030. 
Yes, if the industry were to stop investments and in new supply as some scenarios for net zero by 2050 suggest, quote, if we stop investing, we leave all these resources in the ground and the price will rocket to the roof. Yes, a triple digit oil price is no longer uh, an outrageous prediction as it would have been just a year ago. Uh, demand is coming back. Yep, this is some oil analyst, Francisco Blanche, quote, we are moving into a straight jacket for energy. We want, we don't want to use coal. We want to use less and less gas. We want to move away from oil. Yes. Uh, there you go. Uh, as much as climate activists want a stop to investment in new supply, the industry and the world can not afford that because oil demand continues to grow. And, uh, and then they have some other like various versions of the same story. Uh, here is peak oil demand forecast turns sour as demand keeps growing. Yes. Uh, there are signs that the demise of fossil fuels has been greatly exaggerated. Yes, in the mind of many a news consumer, oil is on its way out. So is coal. So is gas. Although that one might stick around for a little longer, we are, after all, moving into a new era of clean energy. And while it will take us some time to get there, it is our only option for a future. And fossil fuels have no place in that future. Yes, the latest oil, gas, and coal price rally, therefore, must have come as a shock to the hypothetical news consumer. It turns out, this rally said, that news does not always reflect reality. Neither do oil and gas price forecasts. Remember when there was a gas glut as recently as last year? Everyone said it would persist, keeping prices low, but it didn't. Yes, the glut ended quite suddenly this year. Do you think so? Uh, <clears throat> the dominant narrative is that the renewable energy rush will kill off oil demand growth in a few years, a decade at most. Yet this narrative never foresaw the current rally. For some reason, it never factored in the possibility of a surge in the demand for coal. But not, not in just the usual places, but in countries such as the United States, where coal consumption is on track to rise for the first time since 2014. We're going to get to that here in a minute. The energy crunch this year disrupted a lot of narratives. Yes. Uh, the short-term outlook is quite fascinating. Crude oil inventories, and this is all over the mainstream media today, Crude oil inventories are being drawn down across the world. Yes, demand, meanwhile, is rising with the energy crunch seen adding anywhere between 500,000 and 700,000 barrels per day to the global daily average. 
this combined with reports that U.S. crude oil inventories are 6% below the five-year average for this time of year, uh, and that OECD inventories are 160 million barrels below the pre-COVID average. Yes, has been very effective in keeping prices above $80. Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, some are already talking about $200 uh, Brent, I mentioned that uh, last week. There are also other signs that the demise of fossil fuels has been greatly exaggerated. Fund managers are returning to oil and gas stocks, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there you go. Uh, summing it up, a recent report warned that oil and gas production plans by the 15 biggest producers are at great odds with the Paris Agreement emissions targets. In other words, these 15 biggest producers continue to bet on oil and gas despite emission ambitions including their own stated net zero targets. Yes, oil may not reach $200, but it might end up being around and in wide use for longer than many might have hoped and believed. I have uh, been, I, I, I have never veered from this. Uh, okay, so what does all this mean, of course, for oil prices? Well, according to this analysis, wow, oil prices will remain high for years to come. Yes, a growing number of major investment by banks are turning bullish on the oil in the medium to long term. Uh, we've, as we're talking about uh, supply deficits as demand rebounds to pre-corona panic levels, rebounding consumption and tight supply could push oil prices even higher. Yes, six years after former BP chief executive Bob Dudley said that, quote, the industry needs to prepare for lower, for longer, a growing number of major investment banks now expect higher for longer oil prices. Uh, rebounding global oil consumption amid tight supply, contrary to some forecasts last year that indicate demand may have peaked or was close to its peak, as well as years of underinvestment have prompted the Wall Street banks to raise significantly their projections for oil prices in short and medium term. Uh, Goldman Sachs is calling for $90 oil by the end of this year, up from their previous expectation of 80. It was 86 yesterday. Uh, 90. I right now I am calling $100 in barrel oil by the end of this year. It was $86 on uh, October 26. $86. Okay. We're still uh, over two months away from the end of the year. Uh, Oil demand, this is one of the, this is Damien Corvin, head of energy research, blah, 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 said oil demand will set record highs next year and the year after that. Yes, uh, quote, we are facing potential multi-year deficits and the risk of significantly higher prices. 
there you go. Uh, anyway, let's. How about uh, well, this is a just a quick article with a with a little chart and stuff. We're going to move from oil to coal. China and India are both needing more coal, and prices are now extremely high. They need maximum fossil fuel. I'm a little bit uh, confused about this. This is looking at India. Looking at India, first day, they have it broken down, and they say coal... Uh, I guess lignite is a kind of coal. So coal right now in India is about 54% of, uh, but the pie chart looks to me, that big blue thing looks like about 70%, but somewhere in there, but, but you get the idea that uh, India over one half is by call, but I've, I've I talked a lot about that the last time. So what is going on right here in our own country with coal? U.S. coal stocks, kind of like the oil uh, supply, U.S. coal stocks plunge to the lowest level since 1997, rallying natural gas prices this year. In another article, they are predicting that natural gas heating bills, you can expect a 30% rise if you use natural gas for it. As I do, we're getting the, I'm, I'm getting the propane tank filled on Saturday. I have no idea what they're going to sock me for. I didn't, I didn't even ask because I don't want to know. So in another article, they were, the latest estimate is expect your gas bill to go up 30% this winter. Uh, rallying natural gas prices this year have increased coal-fired power generation at U.S. utilities. This is not just China and India. At U.S. utilities, which ended uh, the month of August with the lowest total coal stockpiles since at least 1997 as U.S. coal stockpiles declined 13.2% in August compared to July, reaching 84 million tons. Uh, this is the lowest level of total U.S. coal stockpiles recorded for the month uh, since reporting began in 2001. Uh, Bloomberg says the lowest in 24 years, back to 1997. All parts of the country except for the western region, saw an increase in electricity generation from coal in August compared to the same month last year. Uh, this is Joe Kraft, President and CEO of Minor Alliance Resource Partners, quote, since our last earnings call, fossil fuel prices have increased dramatically around the world as supply has fallen woefully short of demand. Since the beginning of this year, worldwide liquid natural gas prices have escalated fourfold in Asia and Europe. Uh, this year, annual U.S. coal-fired electricity generation will increase for the first time since 2014, according to the EIA. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, but we're going to wind up 
This is oilprice.com asking, well, not asking the question, I guess, telling us what we can expect from the COP26 climate summit. So this is what the fossil fuel investors uh, have to, uh, this is their forecast for COP26. The COP26 climate summit has been touted as one of the most important international events for the past few years. The summit will attempt to create a plan of action to tackle climate change and reduce global emissions. One problem, the discrepancy between what the UN believes needs to be done to rein in climate change and what countries are prepared to do is the biggest challenge that COP 2016 attendees will need to tackle. Do you think so? Uh, yes. Uh, there are multiple factors working against the summit's success. Yeah, not even talking about the methane bomb. Uh, <laughs> the principal aim of their meeting is to tailor a mechanism for implementing the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. Yes hoping to contain global temperature rises to an average of one and a half degrees Celsius. Yes. Uh, climate change has been identified by a number of international agencies, multinational businesses, and environmental organizations as the biggest threat to humankind at the moment. So urgent action is needed. Yes, the point of COP26 is to define the steps of this action and how it will be taken. However, it may, it may fall well short of expectations. Yes, here is just days before the summit began, the BBC uncovered documents that showed some nations have lobbied for changes in the latest report of the IPCC that made some alarming conclusions about the state of the planet's climate as a result of human activity and called for urgent changes in our way of life to contain the adverse changes. Yes, uh, according to the BBC, uh, which cited leaked sub submissions on the report from various nations, some nations insisted on the IPCC downplaying the urgency of climate action. Nations that made such remarks include Saudi Arabia, wow, imagine that, Japan and Australia, uh, I bet. Uh, China is a good example of why for all their good intentions and strong ambitions, COP26 may fail to deliver. China's government has repeatedly said it is committed to a lower emission future, even announcing a 2060 deadline to become net zero economy. Yes, yet recently Beijing has changed its tune amid the energy crunch that has it ordering utilities to do whatever it takes to secure energy this winter. Yes, talking about coal burning skyrocketing in China, and then um, the same story uh, over another big polluter, India. Uh, no way they're gonna be on board, even the most passionate proponents of the energy transition seem to have tempered their expectations. Yes, according to a Times Magazine report, 
the report cited U.S. climate envoy John Kerry as saying, quote, there will be a gap, close quote, between the commitments attendees are expected to make and actual commitments necessary to make this hilarious one and a half degree scenario happen. Uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who immortalized himself earlier this month by telling the UN that, quote, it's easy to be green, to be green now says the talks will be extremely tough. Yes. <clears throat> the discrepancy between what the UN believes needs to be done to rein in climate change and what countries are prepared, prepared to do is by all means the biggest challenge that COP26 need to tackle. Yet another problem has also emerged recently. Not all countries will even be represented at the summit. Yes, uh, many developing countries simply cannot afford the cost of attending the event. And then, of course, that guy from China, he is backed out. Uh, he will be a no-show. Anyway, summing it up, and summing up, there's oilprice.com uh, roundup. <clears throat> that the Paris Agreement sets ambitious targets has been clear for a long time. I don't know where, well, I guess they're talking about that hilarious target of one and a half degrees C. Yet, with every new report on climate change, you know, these dire reports, these targets sound increasingly urgent and vital. Hitting the targets, however, will be far from easy, as that would require a lot of dramatic adjustments to the global economy. It is because of the nature of these adjustments and the fact that most countries' national interests are at odds with these adjustments that COP26 may fail, may fail to live up to the great expectations placed on it. Yes. Great expectations uh, for the COP26 summit. Let me tell you, so Sancho Panza, what are your great expectations of the COP26 summit? Would you like to comment on your great expectations of the COP26 summit? What do you think, Sancho? Uh, are we going to transition to clean green energy? Are we going to save the planet? Are we going to keep Are we going to keep the temperature below one and a half C rise? Is Greta Thunberg going to save the planet? Greta Thunberg has switched and she is now going. She says she will show up initially. Greta said she was not going, but I guess she sees some hope. Anyway, uh, I got to wrap this up because I got to turn on the heater. And I guess next week we will be firing up the propane furnace as the first mention of snow in the forecast next Friday. Get out there and enjoy your gas-fed furnace while you still can. Bye, guys. Yes, you itchy little dog. Yes, you pop. I just need to go to Florida for the winter.